was a slave but he rebelled and he went on to be free and in the process became a king to a colony which he has created or he has helped become a group after freeing all those slaves at that moment and um, that's how his story goes and I believe his story needs to be told and appreciated and put in the history books and all black people need to know about this hero. Hello fam, welcome to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Wangil Zalalem bringing you this report. Today I bring to you a hero, an enslaved black man who turned into a king in Venezuela. Let me read you the article and we'll be back. This article is from Face to Face Africa and they wrote, um, history says that in 16th century, enslaved men and women were transported all over the new world and in Venezuela particularly around 100,000 slaves were imported from Africa to work on sugar and indigo plantations as well as mines that were being managed by the Spanish crown. Those mines included the popular real, okay, excuse my pronunciation on this, real de Minas de San Felipe de Bur, I'm sure I didn't say it the right way where both African slaves and indigenous Jirajira natives extracted valuable minerals from the earth. Among those workers was Miguel, born around 1510 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Miguel was brought to Venezuela by slave owner Damien del Barrio before he was later inherited by his son, Pedro del Barrio, while working in the province of Yaracuay, Miguel, who had then gained fame as a rebellious slave, resisted an attempt by a Spanish foreman, Diego Hernandez de Serpa, to punish him. An account states that Miguel grabbed a sword from the foreman and fought him before escaping to the nearby mountains. It was from his base in the mountains that Miguel started a maroon colony and ultimately led a rebellion of enslaved workers in the San Filipino mines. Miguel's forces included freed Africans, mulattoes, Zambus, and Jirajura indigenous Americans, numbering 1,500. It is not known the exact location of his maroon colony, which eventually became known as the Kingdom of Buria. But what is known is that Miguel was made king of the colony in 1552, while his wife and son became the queen and prince. With his weapons and followers, Miguel was able to attack Spanish guards at the San Felipe mines. He captured many of them and killed those who has been so cruel to the enslaved workers. Miguel and his followers then attacked other plantations and mines across the Uraquai province. And in the midst of the raids, he freed enslaved workers and brought them to his colony, where some became administrators, governors, and military officers. At this point, Miguel has started becoming a pain in the neck of the Spanish, who made several attempts to get rid of him and his newfound kingdom. But Miguel and his followers were always ready to fight back. And in one of the attacks from the Spanish colonial troops, a report says Miguel and his troops painted their faces using Ganipa Americana, a plant from the region to intimidate the Spanish forces. Now having the upper hand, Miguel and his men attacked the town, burned a church and killed priests Toribio Ruiz and six settlers in 1555. The battle between Miguel's followers and the Spanish colonial troops continued until Miguel was killed in 1555 by Spanish troops commanded by Captain Diego de Lozada. Following his death, his kingdom fell and most of his followers who survived the war were re-enslaved. Miguel did rule for only three years, but during his short reign, he became a liberator, leading enslaved men and women. He freed back into the safety of his colony. To date, his story inspires many, as it became a part of Venezuelan folklore and literature. His resistance, of course, influenced other enslaved workers who would flee from mines and plantations to form their own maroon communities from the 1800s. All in all, maroons were a special class of runaways. For various reasons, they did not seek refuge in sanctuary cities as they would be known today. Instead, they left the cities and towns created by whites and chose to create settlements, big and small, in harsh climates where the whites were unlikely to pursue them. Swamps and bays, mountains and forests became their new homes. As you just heard, Miguel's story is very inspirational. He was an actual slave in the 1500s and he fought his way out of that and became a king, ruled for three years and helped slaves, women and men, break out of their chain leave their masters and start this colony with him and he was an actual king as you heard miguel is an inspiration to all of us but yet we've never heard of it at least i haven't when we hear about all these people i have never ever heard about him and he was a king um, in venezuela 
and he changed his life like literally from a slaved man to a free man and he was freeing all the people that he comes across the that are slaves and uh, he was building this colony and he was actually the king and uh, his wife with his wife and his son and this powerful man uh, existed and we didn't even hear about it which is really unfortunate but i'm really grateful for face to uh, face to face africa for reporting on this so that now i bring this to you and if there were people that didn't know about miguel now you know there was this guy this hero that was alive in 15 uh, hundreds and he actually conquered the spanish and he created his own thing and they feared him and he got to a place that he is by not taking no and he refused they were like you're our slave and he was like mm, no i don't think so so um he was an actual king and that makes me really happy to report to you that this hero existed and i believe all black people need to know about this guy he was a rebel during that time and he freed a lot of slaves and they were living freely because of him and he also inspired a lot more even after his death a lot of people a lot of slaves um, fled their masters and created their own community which they lived as free men and women and the white people were afraid to go there and target them or touch them because the the places they went to are as, as I, I read to you in the report mountains and near rivers so back then if you remember like they didn't the white people didn't know how to have their body didn't know how to handle that and that is one of the reasons they've taken slaves from africa to um, america to cultivate their lands and to get those things that they needed like farming and cotton and everything them themselves they couldn't they kept dying and whatever kind of disease comes they just go quickly but uh the black man or the people that they used to take from africa were stronger and that was why one of the reasons why they were targeting africans because the men were really strong the women were strong and also they used to take just the healthy ones you know they never took old people they took young kids um, or people that are really strong the men the strongest men they can find they were hunting them down and stealing them and putting them in chains and taking them to america or in this case venezuela so out of those people that were taken to venezuela miguel was one of them and um, he was raised he was a slave but he rebelled and he went on to be free and in the process became a king to a colony which he has created or he has helped become a group after freeing all those slaves at that moment and um, that's how his story goes and i believe his story needs to be told and appreciated and put in the history books and all black people need to know about this hero this king Miguel anyways guys I really love the story that's why I wanted to bring this to you do let us know down below what your thoughts are about Miguel the king in Venezuela that turned from a slave to a king and conquered the Spanish I am Angel Zalal and bringing you this report I'll see you on the next one bye